Today we're going to be learning how to use channel mixer for color grading in Photoshop. Though there are tons of ways of color grading in Photoshop, this method uses the fundamental principle of RGB within an RGB, which if you understand, I bet you'll have a lot of fun and also color grading will become a breeze. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to follow along using this photo, make sure to go ahead and download that using the links in the description. Now before we jump into any of color grading and all that stuff, let's understand the concepts because concepts are major. So you already know, we already know that every image that you see on the screen is composed of three colors, red, green and blue, which can easily be represented by channels in Photoshop. So we have this image already open. If we move to channels, we have three different channels, red, green and blue and all of these three channels combine together to form the RGB channel which you see is full colored. Now some of you might ask which I've already addressed before that why are they black and white? They're not black and white. They are just representation. As you can see, if we move back to RGB, if we look at the full color, you see this area is a little bit bluish, right? So if we move to the blue channel, have a look. This area is so bright here, right? But this area is not so bright. And the green area is also not so bright. But if you move back to RGB, look at the green area. Okay, this area has a lot of green. So if we move to the green channel, have a look. This area is so brighter than this area. But in the blue channel, the opposite happened. This area is brighter than this area. Why? Because this had blue and this had green. And that's how it works. These are all just representations. The brighter the area, the more the color of that particular channel. For example, in this, this area is bright, this area is dark, which means that this area has more of blue than this area. Similarly, in this one, this area is bright, which means that this area has more of green than this area. So these are representations. So just a quick little tip. If you're having trouble seeing different channels in black and white, you can also change them to color. Here's how to do it. Go to edit, preferences and then interface. If you're using a Mac, the preferences would be under your Photoshop menu, preferences, and then we have interface. Now there's an option called show channels in color. Just check that and click OK. Now, as you can see, every channel now shows up in color. See, this area has a lot of blue. This area doesn't have so much of a blue and that makes sense. But black and white representations gave you a much more better look at which color is more where, right? So we're going to change it back to black and white. But if you are comfortable with this, stick with this. Okay, preferences, then interface, just check off the option and there we go. Now, what does channel mixer has to do with it? You might ask. Good question. Let me just show you. But before I do, as the name suggests, Channel Mixer allows you to control how the three channels interact with each other. Okay, so let's just add Channel Mixer and you can add this as an adjustment layer and also as an adjustment. So, but if you're adding this as an adjustment, make sure you convert this into a smart object. Let's unlock the layer by clicking on the lock and then right click convert to smart object. Now you can add it by going to image adjustments. There we have the Channel Mixer right here. Now, if you do any adjustments, and click OK, it will open up as a smart filter, which you can always go ahead and double click and change. And that's why I asked you to convert this into a smart object. That's one way. Okay, let's go back. Also, another way is using an adjustment layer, which I prefer because if you're working on several layers, and if you want to add that adjustments to every other layer, everything which is beneath it, if you are especially working on a composite, then adjustment layer might be the one you might want to use. And also you can limit the adjustment layer to just one layer by using a clipping mask. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on this gray white icon and choose channel mixer. Now this is very simple to use. You don't need to be intimidated by the way it looks. It's really simple. Let's just move it to the left so that you have a better look at it. Now on the preset panel, we can choose the preset that we have already saved and that pretty much is self-explanatory. There are several presets already given. We don't want that. This is important, the output channel. This is the channel that we are working on right now. So we are working on the red channel or the green channel or the blue channel. So the channel in which we are right now working on. So suppose you want to work in the red channel. Now, once you have chosen the red channel, don't think these sliders control red, green or blue. These sliders only control the amount of red. The only work these sliders will do is that they will increase or decrease the value of red because you have chosen red in the main channel sections and that's what it will do. But why do we have three sliders then? Good question. 
If you increase the slider of this one to the right of the red, it will increase the value of red in the red areas. Listen to this carefully. If you increase the slider of the red, okay, it will increase the value of red in the red areas. If you take it to the left, it will decrease the value of red from the red areas. Similarly with the green slider, if you increase the green, it will increase the value of red in the green areas. If you decrease it, it will take away the value of red from the green areas. Okay, makes sense. Now, some of you might ask why was this 100 and why are these 0 by default? Let's just reset that. Because we are in the red channel. In, in the red channel, we'll have red 100 and the rest 0. Similarly, in the green channel, we have green 100 and the rest 0. And that kind of explains it all because we are working in the red or the green or the blue channel. And in that particular channel, red or green or blue, whatever channel that is, is the dominant color. And that's why we have that 200. Now, let's move back to the red channel. So if we increase the value of the red slider, the only thing that will happen is it will increase the red in the red areas. Okay, all these sliders do, again I'm going to tell you, all these sliders do is that increase or decrease the value of red, but we have three sliders, why? Because they determine the area from which to decrease or increase the value. So let's increase the value of red in the red areas, just a little bit. And let's decrease the value of red from the green areas. Does it look good? No. Let's increase it just a little bit, just like that, and blue. Let's take it to the left. We want to take away the reds from the blue areas. Okay, see, we are taking away the reds from these blue areas. It's looking fine. Now, what is this total? Let's pause for a second and let's understand what total means. So, suppose you have three glasses, red, green, and blue, three glasses. And you have one bottle full of red color and that's just one liter. Okay, one liter bottle full of red color and three glasses or tumblers colored red, green, and blue. Now, you can fill up the red a little bit more and green less and the blue less and finish the bottle. Or you can fill green a little more, red a little less and blue a little less with the bottle completely empty. Or you can do anything, you can try any combinations but you can finish the bottle, right? And that situation is when the total is 100. But if the total is beyond 100, then you're adding extra color. You're taking another bottle, you're borrowing another bottle and filling it even more into the glasses. That's when you're using more than one liter, more than what came with the image. That one liter that came with the image, now you're using more. That's when the total exceeds. But if the total is less than 100, you're not using the complete bottle. Maybe you're drinking it, but you're filling less and the total doesn't sum up to one liter in the glasses. So that's what it is. If your total exceeds 100, which means you're adding extra color, increasing the overall saturation, increasing the overall value of the red channel. And if that value is less than 100, which means you're not using up the complete red, decreasing the overall saturation of the red channel. And that's what it is. So it's better, it's said, it's recommended that you move the value so much that the value goes to 100, just like this, to maintain the balance. But I find it to be creatively useful to go beyond or below 100. That's totally upon you, that's a creative call, okay? But if you want to be totally balanced, you can balance it and be at 100 or below 100. So all in all, we can say that if the value is at 100, we are using all of the red, all of the color that came with the image and we are just changing the distribution. If we are increasing the red in the red areas, we have to decrease it for, from somewhere to keep the value at 100. So we are changing the distribution, but the amount that we use is just the same. If the value is more than 100, we are using extra color. We are taking up color from somewhere and using it, increasing the overall saturation of the channel. If the value is lesser than 100, we are not using up all the colors. And that's completely a creative call. So once you're satisfied with this, I want to increase the value there and not to decrease so much from the blues. There we go, 131 is fine. Make sure the color is not so much that the image is losing any details or the pixels are breaking or showing some banding. Just make sure that doesn't happen, okay? Let's move on to the green channel. Now we wanna increase the value of green in the green areas, okay? 
So, okay. looks good, right? Looks fine. Let's try the red. You want to increase the value of green in the red areas just a little bit. And want to decrease the value of green from the blue areas just a little bit. And here's the thing. You just have red, green and blue here. But what if you want to access more colors? It's simple. Just remember the opposite. The opposite of red is cyan. The opposite of green is magenta. And the opposite of blue is yellow. So we are in the green channel. If you want to add more magenta to the blue areas, all you have to do is take the slider to the left. And as you can see, this adds more magenta to the blue areas. Okay. So that's how you access extra colors. Just remember the opposites. How to remember the opposites? RGB. CMYK. You remember that, right? RGB, CMY. R is the opposite of C. G is the opposite of M, CM. And B is the opposite of Y, which means blue is the opposite of yellow. Simple. Now let's move on. Let's increase the reds just a little bit more. There we go. Let's come to the blue channel. And in this also, we have a green bottle of one liter. We have three glasses, red, green, and blue, and we are just distributing. If the sum of the water or the color in the glasses is more than one liter, you're using extra color and the value is more than 100. If the sum of the water in the glasses is less than 100, is less than one liter, the value is less than 100, you're using less of colors. Easy? Let's move to blue. So we want to increase the blue in the blue areas. On a decrease blues. Now, here's the trick. These are sun rays, right? And we want the sun rays to be yellow. Now, what's the opposite of blue? Yellow, right? So, if we take this ladder, now this area is mostly red area, right? This sunshine area. So, you want to make this area more yellowish. So, what these sliders do? They increase or decrease the value of the channel you have selected. Now, what's the opposite of blue? Yellow. So if we take this ladder to the left, what color will we get? Yellow, right? So let's take this ladder. See, it makes it yellow. Let's decrease the greens. It makes it even more yellow. So on. Now you can take as much time as you want in this. And there we go. Have a look at the before and after. Let me just close it so that you can have a better look. So this is the before. This is the after. We just quickly did it. If you have more time, you can spend more time, adjust, experiment and see how different adjustments look. And that's pretty much it about Channel Mixer in Photoshop. Just remember this. Every image is made up of red, green and blue. And then when you add the Channel Mixer, you can control the amounts of red, green and blue in red, green and blue areas. So that was RGB within an RGB. Interesting, isn't it? Now, first you select the channel you want to work on. For example, you chose red. Then all these three sliders do is that control the amounts of red in red areas, green areas and blue areas. And that's pretty much the same for all channels. Now, here's one more important thing which we skipped, which is not that much important, but important to know. There's one more slider here. Constant slider. Now, what that slider does, if you're in the blue channel, if you increase it, it increases the overall value of the channel. Up until now, we were increasing the values only in specific areas. But this is like increasing the overall value of the channel. For example, we have red, green and blue. And we were increasing the reds in the red areas, green areas, blue areas, so on and so forth. But this increases the overall value of the channel. Red, green and blue. So this is the blue. We are increasing the overall value. Okay. Not so much useful, but just so you know, it's always there. I'm going to make, add a little tint to the photo, you can use this to do whatever you want. Okay. Let's go back. I didn't quite like it. So that pretty much wraps up the channel mixer in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks, tutorials, and even live stream. You get notified when I have a live stream. So I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.